Nearly 15 years since I first heard about this series, guys, and the time is almost upon us. But before we get into why I decided to read Malazan, let's take a quick little look at The Book of the Fallen by Steven Erickson. Destiny is a lie. Destiny is justification for atrocity. It is the means by which murderers armor themselves against reprimand. It is a word intended to stand in the place of ethics, denying all moral context. We humans do not understand compassion. In each moment of our lives, we betray it. We know of its worth, yet in knowing, we then attach it a value. We guard the giving of it, believing it must be earned. Compassion is priceless in the truest sense of the word. It must be given freely, in abundance. There is something profoundly cynical, my friends, in the notion of paradise after death. The lure is evasion. The promise is excusative. One need not accept responsibility for the world as it is. And by extension, one need not do anything about it. To strive for change, for true goodness in this mortal world, one must acknowledge and accept within one's own soul that this mortal reality has a purpose in itself, that its greatest value is not for us, but for our children and their children. To view life as but a quick passage alone, a foul, tortured path, made foul and tortured by our own indifference, is to excuse all manner of misery and depravity, and to exact cruel punishment upon the innocent lives to come. Retribution seen in natural catastrophes is manufactured by all too eager and all too pious people. Each one convinced that the world will end, but spare them and them alone. But we all know the world is inherited by the obnoxious, not the righteous. I defy this notion of paradise beyond those gates of bone. If the soul truly survives the passage, then it behooves us, each of us my friends, to nurture a faith in similitude. What awaits us is a reflection of what we leave behind. And in the squandering of our mortal existence, we surrender the opportunity to learn the ways of goodness, the practice of sympathy, empathy, compassion, and healing. All pass by in our rush to arrive at a place of glory and beauty, a place we did not earn, a place most of us certainly do not deserve. Hey, what's up, bookworms and bridge burners? I have no idea what that reference means, but I heard it from someone and I really liked it, so I decided that I was going to use it. Guys, we are here today to talk about Steven Erickson's fantasy epic, Malazan, Book of the Fallen, and more particularly, why I decided to read it. This is something that has been on the radar for quite some time, as I talked about in the intro there, but uh, it's something that never quite happened. I'm going to kind of tell you about why and what has led me to finally deciding to clamp down and decide to tackle this crazy, crazy, crazy hyped, uh, maybe fear-mongered uh, fantasy series here. Uh, I first heard about the series around 2006. Uh, I was after Feast for Crows came out by, uh, by George R. R. Martin and that long wait started for A Dance of Dragons. You guys know all the jokes with uh, Game of Thrones or the Song of Ice and Fire series and the waiting and all that stuff. So I won't rehash that here. But I was looking for something new. But the thing was, is because of A Song of Ice and Fire and having that being scarred of having to wait forever, I heard about Malazan from a friend and said, look, if you are really into Song of Ice and Fire or if you've read something like Wheel of Time, which I hadn't at that time, but he said, I, I think that you would really, really enjoy this. It's very, very deep. It's very dense. It requires a lot of thought. You have to pay attention. It is, uh, it is uh, almost like work at times, but it is so rewarding. I was like, okay, well, let's go check it out. And then I go to the bookstore, and I'm like, wait a second. I believe at the time the sixth book was out around 2006. Like, 
Wait, so the series isn't complete? And my friend at the time told me, well, it's going to be eight books. So by the time you finish reading these six heavy books, you know, it'll be close to being... I'm like, no, I'm not waiting anymore. I've had enough of fantasy authors telling me, oh yeah, it's coming next year, and then it never came. So I decided, I'll wait until it's done. Then by the time the eighth book came out, I was like, wait a second, this says it's going to be ten books. So I kept telling myself, when the series is done, then I'll give it a try. So around 2011, when the final book came out, I said, okay, it's finally done. And then I kept kicking the can down the road. Uh, I don't really know what the problem was. I think I just had been built up for so long about how much thought and how much work this series was and how much effort you really had to put into it. And I mean, honestly, guys, who wants to read if it feels like work? So it was kind of a, a combination of my own fears and the fears of everyone telling me how much you really had to work to make this series work for you. But then it was really worth it. It was really worth it. If you just, you know, did this, 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 and this, uh, you're really going to like it. So that's kind of what uh, what kind of decided to make me wait on it. But then uh, earlier, well, early last year, I went ahead and I picked up the entire series on paperback. So I said I had no idea when I was going to read it, right? That was, again, me hedging, saying, you know, I, I, I'd like to read it, but I have no idea when, even though I had spent all that money to get the matching paperback set, which you see up there now. And I thought, uh, okay, well, maybe someday. Maybe someday. Even then, I was like, maybe someday. And then I put up a viewer poll, and I said, hey, here are five series I'm really interested in reading. And I took a poll, and it won. Malazan won far and away, guys. It wasn't even close. It was like a two to one over the second place, which was Robin Hobbs, Realm of the Elderlings, which I'll also be starting sometime in 2021. But just with Farseer, I haven't committed to that whole series. So, again, why have I decided to read this? Well, I mean, uh, you guys have kind of recommended this. And now that I've got a, uh, a read along, which I've got scheduled, which I'll talk about in a minute, it just seems like. It is time. But let's talk a little bit about the background of the series here. He started writing it, Stephen Eric started writing it in the 1980s with his friend Ian Esselman. It was kind of a backdrop to their Dungeons and Dragons game. They're modified Dungeons and Dragons. So don't tell me if nothing good comes out of it's just a bunch of dorks that write Dungeons and Dragons. Well, you know what? There's a bunch of just a bunch of dorks that write fantasy novels. So um this is the business that we've chosen, right? But uh over time it just kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger they decided, hey, let's go ahead and write like a movie screenplay. And they wrote this screenplay and they kind of tried pitching around. No one ever really, uh, no no bites on it. So Erickson decided to just decided to make it into a fantasy novel, which was Gardens of the Moon. He finished it around 1992, but it wasn't published until 1999. But here's the big thing. When he finally did sell it, Bantam gave him a huge payout with the catch that there would be nine more books coming. So my friend that told me it was going to be eight books was just trying to you know blow smoke up my ass so I'd read the series. It was always going to be uh, 10 books here. Brings us to today where there are, I think, 27 total books and novellas combined in this universe with more being written. They are st still, both of them are still working on this series. So this world is still continuing to develop all these years later. And uh, But I just wanted to let you guys know, I am just committing to Book of the Fallen. Just the 10 very big books. I, I know a lot of people have been like, oh, well, you got to read all these. No, no, guys. I will never finish this if I try to do this chronological read or whatever, which is more convoluted, I think, than some of the things I've heard about the series already. Uh, if I really love these 10 books and I invest in this world super, super heavy, yeah, I'll go back and read those or maybe I'll do a reread. Like uh, when I talk about the read-along, there are a lot of people who are doing the reread and during these gaps we have in our read-along schedule, they're going to read those side novels. So uh, that's something that we'll get into. But what exactly is the Book of the Fallen, you ask? Because there are plenty like me who have been curious about this series but have never jumped in. So guys, let's talk about what is it about. Now before I do this, I want to give a shout out to the website the Quill to Live. They are a book review site or book suggestion site. If you don't know, it is very hard to find a vague synopsis of what this series is about. And I didn't want to spoil myself. So it was very hard trying to put together a what is this about without being so vague it would make no sense, right? I mean, all I was going to do was just talk about what Guards of the Moon is about, which I still don't think anyone can tell me. But here's the thing. I found an article that Quill to Live did, and I'm going to link it in the description below, and I'm going to quote some things directly from that. So I wanted to give them credit, not only for not spoiling this for me, 
but for their kind words that I'm going to use here. You guys are awesome. I follow them on Twitter. They're awesome. I'll link all their stuff below. Thank you guys so much because I'm going to quote you here as I talk about what is it about. Now, guys, the Malazan Book of the Fallen follows the story of the Malazan Empire and their heroes. The Book of the Fallen is a historian's record of the unsung heroes in Malazan's history who died trying to make the world a better place. Now, the series revolves around two overarching subjects. The various conflicts that the Malazan Empire is embroiled in all over the world and a new god has showed up and is creating tons of problems for everyone. Now, this crippled god has upset the delicate balance in the various pantheons of the world and they are deeply unhappy about that. Now, there are three sets of stories that all eventually join together, but each cover different parts of this world. The first is the core Malazan armies as they fight to unify the last remnants of their empire and put down some rebellions. The second is of Malazan irregulars in foreign lands, the Malazan aristocracy, and focus more on outnumbered forces escaping pursuit. And then the third follows a rival empire of Malazan, the Lether, and how events on a different continent shape the future of Malazan while also telling the story of the Letheri people themselves. And guys, I have no idea if that is an accurate description of the series or not. To me, that's what I was able to pull from that non-spoilery section of that article they put together. So again, thank you, Quill to Live. You guys are awesome because I think that right there is a better description of anything that I've gotten besides people just saying like, oh, it's just awesome. You've got to read it. That's really, when you ask a Malazan fan, what is this series about? No, it's just awesome. You got to read it. They never really can tell you what it is about except that hey you're not going to understand things for a while but let's talk about why i decided to read it. it's why you guys are here right there's seven reasons several reasons uh first i've been putting this book off over a decade now uh, 2011 when the last book came out i kept finding reasons not to read it and same thing went for wheel of time guys you know i'm a big wheel of time fan now because i read it all you know all of last year and some into this year uh, but here's the thing. Uh, after you finish the Wheel of Time, I, I said finishing the Wheel of Time almost feels like you're getting your master's degree in fantasy, right? Well, I've kind of considered uh, Malazan is like getting your doctorate in fantasy. It definitely seems like the next step. To all the people who say uh, it, it, it's very difficult to read, there's other people who say that is severely overhyped. You just have to understand that when this story starts, you aren't going to get answers. You're going to be like, what is going on? for you know numerous books but here's my thing i'm fine with that storytelling format as long as the author knows where they're going and it very much sounds like erickson knew where he was going so i'm okay with not having any i mean have you guys read stormlight archive read that prologue and tell me you understand anything that's going on when it first started right so i mean it's it's one of those things i have no problems with being like big question marks above my head uh for even a great number of books as long as it's going to get answers and they're going to be satisfying. And I haven't heard anybody who has completed these 10 books and has not said it is immensely satisfying. So uh, again, after I finished Wheel of Time, this seemed the next logical step. That's why I put it on that poll. If I wasn't willing to commit to it, uh, I wouldn't have even put it on there. But uh, I, I think that uh, giving it that viewer poll to show me how much interest there really is in this year, I thought it was kind of like a cult thing for a while, but it seems like this is a very, very popular series among the community. But, but also, guys, I didn't know Wheel of Time was as popular as it was until I started reading it, and that pretty much is what launched this channel. So uh, I, if I can bring in a bunch of new Malazan people, like I'm thinking I'm going to because here's the big thing. We're doing a channel read-along on the Discord. Um uh, in fact, so much people are so excited about this. Someone actually got me a Bridge Burners mug. I don't know if you guys can even see that, uh, and I don't even know what it means. But if people are that excited about it, they're going to send me a mug. Thank you, Scott. Uh, I'm excited uh, about this to know what this is about. But the channel read along, which I'll be doing a video separately for when it gets closer, is starting on January the first. We're going to be starting with Gardens of the Moon, obviously, uh, and it is hundreds of people that are going to be participating in this. Uh, I have a Discord if you guys want to drop onto the Discord, if you want to join in this read-along. I felt it was the best method to go for because this seems like a, a, a series that a lot of people drop out on. 
you know, they don't finish it. So I felt like having a big community together and our Discord's, you know, over like 2,300 users now. I, I thought maybe having a big community reading this together, we can kind of keep each other honest or help, you know, coach people who are struggling and things like that. I felt like a community would be the best way to tackle a series that's large. And there's so many people like me that have had this series. They own the series and they've always found an excuse not to start it. So I felt like it was a really good opportunity to not only create discussion, which is what this channel is all about, but uh, build a, a nice Malazan community. And I think it's great that there's so many new people like myself and there's so many Malazan veterans who want to join along for a reread. So it's, uh, it's going to be exciting. And I'm not exaggerating that number. There are literally hundreds of people that are joining in this read along, at least at the beginning. Here's the thing. I think that Everyone that has read this series says it is far and away the best fantasy series out there. It blows everything else away if you can just understand that. Here's the thing. I'm almost kind of treating this like an anthology series at first because I've heard first book, it sets up this land, these set of characters. Second book, you don't even hear about them. It's this new set of characters, new lands. And then I believe it, then it goes back to them in the third book. Then it's back to book two with book four. And then book five, it's like something completely different. I don't know if that's exactly accurate, but I'm giving you an example there. So basically, instead of dumping you with this humongous world all at once, he's setting them up in their each individual book. And a lot of people can't handle that because they're like, okay, I just, I just read this 700 page book. And now I'm starting book two and it's completely different characters. I, I can see how that would baffle a lot of people and confuse them and make them want to quit. Uh, me understanding that before I go in, I think that helps knowing that. And I would rather him do it that way. Uh, if, he's, if he wants to make this world this big, and, and I've heard it up, I've heard there's like over 18 main species, not even just subspecies. Uh, there's like 16 continents or something. I don't, I, don't, I don't know the exact numbers, but it's massive. It's supposedly massive. So if he's going to have that much info, I'd rather him not dump that all on me at once because that would be just too much. It would feel like I was in history class. So I prefer uh, him breaking it up into several novels. That sounds like a great, great idea. But um, the passion and the excitement that people who have completed this series. I go way back to that one where I announced the poll results and the passion in the comments there just completely blew me away. Because what I had heard, I had heard that the Malazan fan community wasn't quite like the Wheel of Time fan community. I felt like the Wheel of Time fan community was really, really great while I read along with that. They were just always excited to see new people read that series. I had heard that the Malazan community could be kind of elitists. Based off the feedback I got in that video, not at all. I mean, those people seem to be absolutely as welcoming and excited as the Will of Time people did. So I am very excited to talk to a, a, a new group of, uh, of viewers and maybe read-alongers. Read-alongers? Is that a good word? Uh, but uh, it's, it's really cool. Just seeing the passion and the excitement that people had for that series and talking about the emotions that you go through while reading this series sounds really awesome because me as a character guy that's awesome if you're connected enough to these characters that you're going to actually be spilling tears uh, when they leave us that's that's great i have no idea about like how grimdarky this series is based off some of the art i saw uh with people like cut in half and stuff i'm guessing it's pretty gross and i love that uh big abercrombie guy so i'm all for the uh the grimdark but uh again i don't know tons about the series i'm afraid to seriously research it because of how big some of the spoilers are out there. I mean, I keep making the recommendation, I keep making the comparison to Wheel of Time. And that's because it's the only thing I have like comparable in length. Uh, with Wheel of Time, you learn right away, don't Google anybody's name because autocomplete on Google will completely spoil things for you. So I'm doing the same thing, the same approach with Malazan. I don't want to Google any names. I don't want to Google any books, any characters, anything. All I did was look up some art for this and uh, and then that article by Quill to Live. So I don't know a ton about the series because like I said, I don't feel like uh, any fans have done a really good sales job on me. I, I do feel like there is a lot of fear mongering, but there's a lot of people out there Malazan fans that say, man, if you've read numerous fans, if you've read Song of Ice and Fire, which I have, if you've read Wheel of Time, things like that, long epic fantasy series, maybe Dune, you're going to be fine with Malazan. It's not really as difficult as people make it sound. It's just you have to pay attention because there are a lot of characters, there's a lot of lands, there's a lot of regions, there's a lot of names, you know, there's a lot of things you got used to. If you read Wheel of Time where they're like, I think, 4,300 characters, I think you're going to be okay. I don't know. 
I don't know. This might be something I look back on and laugh. I don't know. We shall see. But the, th the fact is, is that we've got this read-along going. So it's going to keep me honest. And I don't start things like this, guys, and not finish it. I know people have some problems with the scheduling, the pacing that we'll talk about when I do that video. But um, yeah, I am excited. Look, it is nervous, ex nervous excitement. Absolutely. I have been intimidated by this series for a long time. I, I really have. So it's one of those things where... I, the closer I get to it, the more excited I am. I'm excited about you know discussing this series with uh, old viewers and new viewers alike. I can't wait to have some of these talks with people. Uh, it's it's just a whole new fandom that I'm hoping to be introduced to, and and I hope it's it's just half as big as what I experienced with Wheel of Time because that's really what gave me the confidence to grow this channel was uh, talking to the uh, wheelies as I called them. So uh, I, I'm excited to meet all these new fans. I, I hope that uh, you know we'll get more veterans to jump on the Discord, jump on that read-along, and join us. Now, last I'll say that a lot of people know about my love for Dune, okay? And I can't find a direct quote by Erickson. Like I said, I don't want to Google this stuff because I'm afraid of spoilers. But a lot of people have said that not necessarily just Guards of Boo, but a lot of parts of the series were directly influenced by Dune. And look, I I believe someone from Erickson's generation was influenced by Dune. It's very easy to see that everybody, I mean, said it while I read Wheel of Time. Robert Jordan was very clearly influenced by Frank Herbert. I mean, it's normal. It's the most popular science fiction book of all time for a reason. And it's that crossover between science fiction and fantasy that I think get a lot of people interested in it. So if this has, you know, themes and ideals that uh, he got influenced by, by Frank Herbert and Dune, then yeah, of course I'm going to love something like this. So uh, here's the thing on this channel, people know I love Dune. So just about everything I say I'm interested in reading, they say, oh yeah, it's a lot like Dune because they want me to read it. Look, I'm going to read this. Don't worry. Uh, not like that. But uh, I have no idea how close it is to Dune or anything like that. But look, I just learned when I was doing some uh, Google image searches, what I did for the intro there. Uh, I just learned that this series has dragons and dinosaurs in it. I mean, somebody had just told me that. I think I would have been sold in the series long before. So guys, that is why I've decided to read Malazan. And I very much hope that you will join me. I'm very excited to do it. It is a very nervous excitement, but I am glad that the time is almost here. January 1st, we start Gardens of the Moon. So I hope you guys will either join me or join me on this journey as I plan to, uh, what I plan to do for this is I will do my standard uh, non-spoiler book review for each book when I get to it. And then I plan to have a spoiler talk like I did with my Stormlight Archive, like I do with Dresden Files, where I will discuss spoilers, but I plan to have a Malazan veteran that's how I'm going to put up as a guest for each one of these episodes. People who have read this series and want to talk about things. And I feel like that'll be the best way to kind of unpack each novel. So that's how coverage for this is going to go over the next two years, guys. So I'm excited. Guys, are you going to join the read-along? Have you read Malazan? Anything you want to talk about? Please keep it spoiler-free in the comments because there are lots of people who have not read the series, and myself included. I'd like to read the comments. And uh, I will talk to you guys there.